Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining this online presentation and um, uh, thank you very much to Alexia and Nina for their very kind invitation to present some of my um, results. So the data I'm going to present today are part of the research project entitled Grammadif that I'm carrying at the University of Oxford in collaboration with uh, Mike Charles. And as indicated by the title of my PowerPoint, it aims at investigating the plant economy of site in Iraq through uh, archaeobotanical analysis. So although I'm sure uh, many of you uh, know it, I'd like to start by presenting the country of Iraq. As you can see on the map, Iraq is a very wide country of more than 400,000 uh, square kilometers mainly bordered by uh, Syria, Turkey, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. It is crossed by the uh, Tigris and the Euphrates rivers that flows into the Persian Gulf in, in, the, in the south. So this um, And Iraq includes the eastern part of the so-called uh, Fertile Crescent here. Uh, but it is a region of extreme contrast. The landscape is uh, diverse, changing from the high mountain uh, region in the northeast, so the Zagros mountain, to the low desertic plain in the, in the south. So the location and the topography of the country impact its environmental condition that vary greatly from the north to um, the uh, south. Evan Guest, who started the flora of Iraq, divided the vegetation uh, into six uh, zones represented by the different color you can see on the map. So the uh, alpine zone that you can see representing in dark purple is located on the high plateau at altitude above uh, 2,750 meters. And this zone is uh, characterized by high rainfall with a low diversity of aromatic perennial herbs. The lower altitude of the mountain range are also characterized by high, high rainfall, allowing for the development of the torn cushion and the forest vegetation uh, that you can see in uh, light pink and uh, green, respectively represented by open shrub formation dominated by astragalus and by uh, oak trees. There are currently four species uh, growing in, in Iraq, and they are sometimes associated to uh, pine trees, uh, Pinus alipensis. The steppe vegetation is divided into two. The most steppe, uh, represented in blue, uh, is located in the upper plain and uh, at the foothill of the mountain, where uh, annual rainfall dropped down to 350, uh, 350 mm. It originally supported an open woodland dominated by pistachio and other small trees, but due to intensive exploitation, it is now mainly represented by uh, luxuriant, well, that's what um, guests called the luxuriant uh, grassland with occasional relictual of semi woody or uh, herbaceous survivors. As for the forest zone, one of the main is issues for cultivation is caused by the leaching of the soil due to high rainfall in the winter especially. The dry steppe is formed by the sparse grassland with scattered shrublets, including many perennial shrubs like Artemisia and Achillea. The uh, subdesert and desert, they are merged in the yellow uh, color on the map is a dominant type of vegetation in Iraq, as you can see. Uh, it covers the whole plain of lower Iraq, where mean annual rainfall are below the 200 millimeter, um, as you can see on the isolate here. And rainfall are not only low, they are also very irregular with an interannual and, inter, uh, and intra-annual uh, variability. The vegetation is very poor, uh, mainly xerophytic and characterized by scattered perennial shrublet and bushes. And in some favorable habitat uh, or after a very heavy rain, the vegetation may develop more densely, but that's very, very uh, rare. In addition, due to the arid uh, climate, the, the soil is partic particularly saline 
allowing only the growth of allophytic plants. Uh, you can see here, for example, Salzola uh, Kali. The exception being the date palm um, adapted to this uh, condition and cultivated in oases along the uh, river. And they're represented by the uh, green spot along Tigris and Euphrates. In general, in the north and south, the edge of the rivers provides favorable conditions for the uh, development of the riparian vegetation, widely dominated by reed. Uh, the accessibility of water also offers an opportunity for cultivation with a settlement of field, um, like here, or card here, and also oasis, of course. Finally, despite the arid condition preva prevailing in the south, the region is also characterized by the presence of its uh, extensive uh, marshes represented by the um, bottom pictures. In terms of cultivation, the 200 uh, millimeter isoyet represents the lower limit allowing for dry farming. Uh, below this limit, uh, irrigation is absolutely uh, necessary. In Iraq, dry farming is practiced in the forest and moist steppe um, zone. Uh, but farmers uh, sometimes build uh, terrace to use uh, gravity uh, for cultivation, as you can see here. However, in practice, depending on crops and place, small scale cultivation implies irrigation by digging a small channel and deviating water from the nearby uh, stream, as you can see here or here farmers are I are uh, doing this practice. In the south, uh, farming is practiced by uh, Bedouin mostly who cultivate extensive uh, field of barley mostly uh, using of course um, irrigation system. So we've seen that the whole country is full of contrast from extremely favorable to unsuitable for uh, both human settlement and cultivation. Wheat and barley are the most important crop currently um, uh, growing in, in Iraq. They are cultivated extensively, representing 80% uh, of the cultivated area, many in the red fed uh, region in the north, uh, considered also as the granary of Iraq. And we also have forage legume represent, uh, that represent an important part of cultivated uh, land. In north and south, despite uh, uh, environmental constraint, uh, farmers managed to cultivate water demanding crop, such as paddy rice, maize and tobacco in the north and barley, tomatoes and aubergine in, in the south. Now I've said that, what was the situation in ancient Iraq? Uh, what were the main crop cultivate, cultivated and consumed? Do we observe that as nowadays a north-south dichotomy? Did inhabitants adapt crop to local environmental condition? And how did the plant economy evolve between the Neolithic and the Iron Age along socio-political change? From the uh, seventh to the first millennium BC, many change occurred uh, in, in Iraq as in other regions of Southwest Asia. This uh, long period is also marked by several environmental and climate change that impacted the landscape, the vegetation, and also, of course, a uh, settlement pattern. Meanwhile, major sociocultural transformation took place, such as the urbanization process leading to the rise of cities between the fourth and the third millennium. This process also involved the reorganization of the society, in particular, the emergence of king and elite, so that's what we call the hierarchization of the society. Ruling daily activities, including the production, consumption, and trading network. Agriculture, and in particular, the cultivation of cereal, favoring the storage, so meaning the accumulation of resources, is considered as the ground for the development of urban societies. As it is still uh, true nowadays, who controlled the field controlled people. But between environmental and cultural change, agriculture has been challenged and required adaptation and innovation like the development of uh, irrigation. Nonetheless, many uh, theories about agriculture in Iraq are built on indirect and biased evidence and sometimes assumption more than archaeological fact. 
Of course, when we talk about agriculture in Mesopotamia, the first type of evidence that pop in our mind are the uh, cuneiform text. Indeed, at the end of the first uh, millennium, so around 3,300 3, uh, BC, the proto-cuneiform appeared in Mesopotamia and was then uh, replaced uh, uh, by the cuneiform writing system during the early dynastic. This textual evidence, primarily recovered in the south of Iraq and more recently in the north, include report of crop cultivated, stored, redistributed, and traded. Most of the tablets are accounting documents, recording deliveries, and output uh, product for the palace. And the quantities mentioned in this uh, record uh, mention uh, give us an idea of the major uh, crop exploited. Among those uh, resources, barley appears as the earliest and most common crop mentioned in the text, in particular because it was distributed as ration to workers um, from the Urtri period onward, so basically from the end of the third millennium. And it was also collected as uh, taxes, which was a very important uh, part of the economy. But relying on cuneiform sources to evaluate the plant economy of ancient Mesopotamian society might be biased because first, tablets were and are not uh, discovered on all sites and in all contexts. They are usually recovered in monumental buildings, often in the archive room or storage place. And what is true for one side or one quarter is not necessarily true for another. Accounting documents are mainly uh, are also mainly uh, recording the product having economic values for the elite or high uh, classes, and sometimes some information are so obvious for the scribe that details are not uh, specified. Uh, and the third and third, uh, as in other disciplines, the taphonomy of the tablet <coughs> do not always allow to read the whole text. Some parts are missing and some cuneiform terms uh, remain uh, mysterious for the specialist. So what I'm trying to say is that although they provide incredible information about farming activities and plant conception, the Babylonian collection of Yale, for example, provide uh, many uh, recipes for this period. But despite this incredible information, we need to be careful when taking into account this archaeological evidence. An alternative discipline allowing for the reconstruction of uh, plant economy is, of course, archaeobotany. And the combined analysis of text and plant remain is then uh, ideal. As you can see on this uh, map, most of the archaeobotanical remain from any period. There is no, uh, everything is mixed. I just uh, divided according to the areas. So most of the archaeobotanical remain recovered in Iraq before uh, 1990s come from sites located in the south. So you can see on this uh, map. Uh, because this uh, region has been in intensively uh, excavated until the beginning of the war. Conversely, projects carried out in the north, so it's very, very north, um, are very uh, scarce and primarily uh, concentrated in the uh, moist step. So you can see the blue line. But of course, despite the apparent numerous archaeobotanical uh, studies carried out in Iraq in the old time, let's say, the reality is different as uh, most of the seeds were recovered by chance or only when visible by uh, eyes. At the time, plant remains were considered as negligible discoveries, especially compared to the extraordinary or monumental and shiny find recovered in the palace and temples. Reports were often uh, quite vague. Uh, there were often uh, no count, only uh, present absence of taxa, and very often uh, no information on the archaeological context. As an example, here uh, you can see um, the report uh, about uh, plant remains recovered in the Oval Temple of Hafaja, excavated during uh, seven years. And as you can see, the archaeobotanical report uh, represents only 14 lines out of a book of uh, 224 pages. 
Looking inside where a more uh, systematic sampling uh, strategy has been applied, the data set is drastically uh, reduced, as you can see on this um, in uh, 2010s, excavation were resumed in Iraq with new project focusing primarily in the north, as you can see here. Uh, so in the so-called Iraqi uh, Kurdistan, where for years there was a huge lack of data, as I said before. Research projects aim at filling the existing uh, gap between uh, the south of Iraq and the southeast Anatolia and northeast um, uh, Syria by exploring the cultural package from the early Neolithic to the Islamic period. The site that you can see uh, in bold, uh, like with the name in bold, uh, represent the project I'm involved with, mainly located in the forest zone, the green area defined by guests. Even if nowadays uh, trees are present in the surrounding landscape. Most of the new projects include uh, environmental studies, among which archaeobotany, but in the broad uh, spectrum, um, take an important part with uh, systematic sampling. The uh, recovery method for the new project I'm working on includes a systematic sampling of burnt layers and firing installation, and as much as possible, the collection of soil in various archaeological contexts. As in Iraq, most remains are preserved by carbonization. Samples have mainly been processed by mechanical uh, flotation using a 0 0.3 mesh to recover the float, except for a site or sample exposed to electricity issues. Sample were then dry in the shade, primarily, primarily uh, scanned during field work and sorted in detail at the University of Oxford with the help of the flow of Iraq, Atlases, and modern reference collection. We uh, created a database including all published data with a careful attention pay on the original recording method, so count, presence, absence, or mixed. And in order, order to be comparable, volume were converted into an estimated number of grains. When available, information on the archaeological context was uh, recorded, as well as information about the date or chronological uh, period assigned to the sample. When some uncertainties uh, remain, we allow the selection of several uh, periods. And similarly, our own data were entered in the database. This allows us to compare the through time in the different vegetation zone. For various reasons, we decided to group the subdesert and the uh, dry steppe, and we also merged the forest with the turn cushion uh, zone. So I'm going to present you uh, a synthesis now, focusing on crop, but I will highlight my speech with uh, specific case studies I'm working on. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the data from other new projects are not included in this presentation, mainly because most of them are still under uh, studies. In order to evaluate the plant economy at a general scale, we selected crop taxa that occur relatively uh, frequently. Looking at the result from old studies, the graph you can see on the on the screen. So before. Uh, 2010s, let's say. The first observation we can make is, of course, the uneven documentation between North and South. The North uh, suffering from the lack of data I uh, described previously. Obviously, by adding data from the new studies, allow to fill the gap in, in, in the North in particular. Um, and now it becomes more clear that uh, whereas the southern economy focus on uh, cereal, so the yellow and uh, red uh, colors, the crop package from the north is more uh, diverse with cereal pulses represented in green and uh, also fruit. So let's start with the first category. Let's, um, uh, let's see uh, the uh, cereal. Looking at the composition, cereal are dominated by gloom wheat, so the um, the yellow, really yellow, let's say, orangey yellow, um, and gloom wheat include emmer and einkorn, and we also have uh, barley that you can see again in red. Whereas in the uh, in the north, barley remained. Uh, 
quite less important through uh, time, except maybe, maybe during the Islamic period. In the south, it um, became dominant uh, between the early dynastic tree and the Akkadian period, so roughly um, around the end of the third millennium. And uh, for what we know, uh, yud with barley was dominant and mainly as a yud, as a yud to row type, which is represented in, um, in light um, red. Free threshing wheat that you can see represented in the very light uh, yellow uh, never became important either in north or uh, south. Here, I'd like to take the opportunity to talk a bit more about the situation in the south through the analysis of three sites, Tel El Weili, Abu Salabir, and Lachsa. Currently, they represent uh, some of the rare lowland sites where a large sampling strategy has been implemented, and they cover uh, approximately uh, six millennium that you can see on the um, on the um, on the graph here. Uh, from the very early uh, earlier settlement in the region, represented by uh, Tel El Weili, to the Iron Age uh, at Larsa, which is not included in this uh, graph. The main mound of, and the Uruk mound of Abu Salabi have been excavated in the 80s by Nicholas Postgate and Susan Pollock, respectively. Well, uh, Larsa and Weili were first excavated at the same period by Jean-Louis Huot, but excavations were uh, recently resumed in 2019 under the direction of Regis Valley. For most people, barley is emblematic for, of the Ubaid period due to the large amount of grain previously recovered at Weili, that you can see here, by Rinderneef. However, these uh, grain originated from a single context, and of course, this context was a uh, silo. Second is a uh, study also indicate um, the importance of bloom wheat, which is again represented in uh, in yellow. Preliminary. Um, Preliminary uh, result obtained from the new project allow me to confirm the importance of gloom wheat, um, uh, especially iron corn on the site. Uh, well, uh, I have to say that iron corn is usually is uh, normally uh, more susceptible to drought. Result from these uh, earliest uh, occupation level are important because they provide information about the very beginning of agriculture in southern Iraq. And second, because numerous granaries have been uncovered and are still uh, uncovered uh, in the new excavation, as you can see on the plan here, all the square um, boxes, I would say, represent a granary um, uh, room. Um, so these uh, funds suggest that the site was involved in large-scale uh, agriculture production. And similarly, the study carried out by Mark Charles at uh, Abu Salabi highlighted the predominance of gloom wheat uh, 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 at the site during the early dynastic period and even before with a, a few samples coming from this period. But new analysis uh, of the material deriving from the uh, Uruk Mound uh, confirms the long tradition of gloom wheat exploitation at the site, as you can see here. Conversely, at Lhasa, the new study indicates that barley was already uh, the uh, main crop uh, exploited during the old Babylonian period, so during the second millennium, and it remained dominant during the first uh, millennium, as demonstrated by the previous study uh, carried out by uh, Reindonif. In the framework of a regional synthesis on Near Eastern crop, Simone Ville highlighted the increasing importance of barley which is represented in black here, between the early and the middle Bronze Age in uh, Upper Mesopotamia, indicated by its high proportion and also high ubiquity. Conversely, she observes the decrease of free threshing wheat and the abandonment of emmer at the beginning of the uh, middle Bronze Age. The integration of old and recent studies in Iraq allow us to investigate the uh, situation in this region. When merging all the subperiod of the early Bronze Age, gloom wheat appear proportionally uh, dominant um, from north and south. So you can see 
here. Whereas during the uh, Middle Bronze Age, so the middle column, uh, a drastic change occurred and barley uh, became uh, the main crop, so barley in, in red. But as I said before, the old archaeobotanical data are uneven and the low amount of seed is not necessarily uh, representative. Looking at site containing more than 100 remains of identified cereal, there is obviously already a north uh, versus uh, south difference during the early Bronze Age, as you can see on the map. As already mentioned, despite its location in the south, uh, the, the high proportion of uh, gloom width uh, recovered at Abu Salabi make it a uh, kind of um, a weird uh, phenomenon in, in this area. For uh, the uh, Middle Bronze Age, the situation is more clear in the south, as you can see on the map, with barley being far dominant. In the south, uh, more studies are required, but gloom width remain important, at least at uh, Mohamed Arab and uh, Girdi Lashkir. At the site of Lashkir, excavated since 2015 by Miguel Molis and Anna Gomez Back, the Ninevit 5 occupation, so corresponding to the beginning of the third millennium, is investigated. The extensive uh, burnt layer allows for the preservation of countrymen inside and outside uh, architectural features. One of the rooms that you can see on the on the picture uh, was particularly rich in cereal, predominantly uh, represented by uh, uh, gloom wheat, uh, represented in 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 yellow. Uh, and I can also say here, like uh, it was even uh, emmer mostly. Emmer is particularly tolerant to storage moisture, especially when stored in chaff which was probably required in this uh, northern region because Lashkir is located in the forest uh, zone. But interestingly, the sample collected in this locus also contained a large amount of fragments that I call the bulgur uh, type because it was uh, fragmented before charring, as you can see on the uh, fragment here. And this may reflect uh, crop processing and a specific way of consuming uh, this cereal uh, on this small, possibly rural uh, settlement. Now let's talk about the second most important group of crop, the uh, pulses. As already mentioned, pulses are mainly associated to the north, you can see here in green, and they are conversely almost absent in the, uh, in the south. Similarly to cereal, uh, Simoneril observed change in the pulse crops uh, between the early and the uh, middle Bronze Age. Lentil and pea uh, decrease uh, between the two uh, periods, whereas uh, bitter veg, which is represented in grey, uh, increase. Although pulses are minor crop compared to cereal, they are part of the plant economy in ancient Iraq. Lentil is the main taxa, proportionally important and quite ubiquitous. Uh, it was present in both north and south. But again, uh, because uh, data are uh, quite uneven, when, talk, uh, when taking into account site uh, exceeding, uh, let's say, 60 identified pulses, the number of sites is considerably reduced and restricted to the northern uh, region. We can, however, uh, notice the higher proportion of grass pea represented in blue uh, during the uh, Middle Bronze Age. Concerning pulses, I'd like to refer to the site of Kunara, where I started to work uh, last year. Excavate, excavation carried out since uh, 2012 in the Upper Town Revel Monumental Building, we can see here, um, and in 2017, cuneiform tablets were recovered in a room that was later called the uh, Office of uh, Flowers due to the content of the written sources. Indeed, they uh, mentioned the trade of various types of flower from barley, wheat, emmer, and an and identified product. The archaeobotanical analysis allowed me to identify both barley and emmer. But interestingly, I also identified a large quantity of lentil that you can see in, in, in green. And they were especially associated to sample collected uh, around unidentified rectangular uh, platforms. 
It is hard to tell if lentils were also involved in the local production and trade of flour, but contemporaneous tablet uh, recovered in the south report the delivery of lentils. One tablet from the site of Uma, so further south, uh, reports the use of pea flowers as part of, as part of uh, offering for the field. So the importance of pulses in Mesopotamian society should not be underestimated. Another pulse I'd like to present is a Syrian mesquite, prosopis. It is not properly a crop as it doesn't have an official economic value. But as you can see, it has been uh, recovered quite frequently in Iraq, mostly in the south, but new archaeobotanical analysis such as at El Awa, so here, uh, Islet is present in the north too. The Syrian mesquite is a shrub that grows in a wide range of habitat through as uh, a summer. And even uh, guests reported that it is usually an indicator of good agricultural land. The wood is usually collected as fuel, but the pod are also grazed by livestock, especially sheep, when the vegetation is dried and there is uh, basically nothing else to graze. So the economic importance of prosopis could have been linked to animal husbandry in Mesopotamia. The high proportion of prosopis recovered at the site of uh, Abu Salabi has been interpreted by uh, Mike Charles as a result of uh, dung used as fuel on, on the site. Another important category of crop is, of course, the fruit. Looking at the most frequent fruit recovered in Iraq, we have fig, grape and date. The graph indicates that the first two uh, are associated to the uh, north, so grape, uh, fig in uh, purple and grape in uh, flashy uh, uh, green, uh, whereas date, which is represented in flashy uh, uh, pink, uh, is uh, affiliated to the uh, south. Fig is one of the earliest fruit recovered in Southwest Asia, as evidenced by the numerous Akan recovered on site as early as PPNB, as uh, PPNA, especially in the Southern Levant. In Iraq, data are much more uh, scarce, and there is no evidence, at least yet, of fig uh, for the um, early Neolithic period. Earliest evidence come from the Alaf occupation of Banailk, uh, which is located in the Zagros Mountain. A very large amount of mineralized uh, 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 fig aken has recently been recovered by uh, Lucas Proctor and Alexia Smith at the uh, late uh, Calcolithic site of uh, Sureza. More surprisingly, could be the recovery of, um, of uh, fig at Abu Salabih on the Urukman and later on the main mount. But also fig tree is a Mediterranean species growing primarily in steppic or open woodland vegetation. It can actually tolerate a wide range of um, habitat, including uh, infertile uh, rock, rocky land. But in the case of Abu Salabi, it is likely that the tree was growing on the riverside next to the site. Similarly to fig, while the earliest archaeobotanical evidence of grape in Southwest Asia are uh, dated to the early Neolithic, in Iraq, data uh, remain are uh, very scarce. Again, earlier uh, evidence come from the small uh, Alaf settlement of Banaik, so in the Zagros. But until the second millennium, data mainly consists of less than five, um, uh, five items recovered. However, as you can see on the on the map, uh, things uh, considerably changed during the first millennium, where the number of sites and the quantity of uh, seed recovered uh, drastically increased. Uh, here I'd like to uh, present the case of uh, Kinis. So the so-called Kinis wine press area is part of a wider Neo-Assyrian complex, including a canal uh, that you can see here that aim to drag water from the Zagros mountain to the new capital city of Nineveh. So basically from the Zagros to Nineveh here. Uh, and it is bordered by relief represented, uh, representing the King uh, Shenarsheb. A uh, total of 18 wine press uh, structure, you can see here represented green. Um, so they include vat and or uh, treading basin, uh, dig into the rock, as you can see here, 
Uh, I've been excavating under the direction of uh, Daniele Morandi, Bo Morandi Bonacosi and uh, Costanza Copini. Associated sample collected last year yielded charred uh, remains of grape, you can see here, confirming the local production of wine during the neo assyrian period. Millennial rainfall, which are above 600 millimeter, are uh, sufficient for the cultivation of grape, and the shallow limestone soil likely allow to drain well water and to produce fruit of high quality. Although the cultivation and trade of wine became more common during the early Bronze Age, uh, textual and iconographical evidence suggests that the consumption of wine was associated to high social class, first the king and then the elite, on various occasions, including ceremonies. But the Nimrud wine list, uh, dated to the 8th uh, century BC, also indicates that wine was uh, distributed, distributed as ration to individual, exactly like uh, barley, working for uh, the king. Whereas uh, date is considered as one of the main emblematic crop of lowland Iraq, it doesn't appear as significant in the archaeobotanical uh, assemblage, as you can see on this uh, graph. This can be the result of taphonomical issue. It cannot be the result of taphonomical issue or uh, due to inappropriate uh, recovery method, as a stone, if you have ever seen that, uh, are big enough to be seen during excavation and their linified uh, structure allow for a good preservation. In total, from the 5th to the 1st millennium uh, BC, remains of uh, date fruit, so the stones, have only been recovered on 11 sites, mainly located in the sub-desert zone, where the conditions are uh, suitable for its uh, cultivation. Earliest evidence of date come from the 6th millennium further south on the site of uh, Dalma 11 in the uh, United Arab Air Emirates. In Iraq, uh, earliest evidence of date uh, stone is slightly more recent, so dated to the 5th uh, uh, millennium, and come from the Ubaid, Ubaid 5 site of Eridu here. However, uh, Reindernif identified pieces of wood in the slightly earlier Ubaid period, so Ubaid 4 of uh, Tel El Weili. More surprising uh, is the identification of uh, date stone uh, this far uh, north at uh, Karana 3 during the late Uruk uh, Nineveh 5 period, so end of the end of the fourth, beginning of the third millennium. But uh, this might also be an intrusive uh, find. But overall, we see that large quantities of date come from a Middle Bronze Age uh, site in, in the south. And here, I'd like to mention the recent discovery we've made in November 2021 at Larsa. The room of one of the large buildings called uh, Building 49, dated to the Old Babylonian period, so uh, 18th uh, century uh, BC, uh, and belonging to Etelu, which uh, was the Grand Vizier of Larsa, kind of uh, prime minister. So this um, uh, this room was uh, completely uh, burned and yielded dozens of uh, cuneiform uh, tablets. These are mostly accounting documents reporting food ration for the Grand Vizier and his family, workers, and also food for uh, livestock. The occupation floor did not only contain tablets, it also provided many charred plant remains, including a large a number of well-preserved uh, date stone, as you can see on the, on the picture here. We can just imagine that date uh, fruit were part of the product used as food ration, unless they were uh, they serve as a snack for the uh, scribe. But there are not so many evidence of date stone in Iraq, and interestingly, the excavation of the archive building of Tel Deh, uh, which is uh, located further north and uh, occupied approximately um, 200 years later than Larsa, also yielded cuneiform tablet associated to uh, date stone. And for the anecdote, both um, our archive room, so from Larsa and Teledeh, contain a large number of uh, rodent pellets, likely due to the storage of grain uh, nearby the archive. Finally, the last uh, category of crop I'd like to present today is the uh, oily taxa. 
I haven't put them in the uh, synthetic graph because uh, the number of remains are much lower than the other categories. They are, um, they are called oily plants, but were not necessarily used to produce oil, as they can be consumed directly in the form of uh, seeds. As in the rest of Southwest Asia, the main oil, oily plant recovered in Iraq is flax. Earliest evidence in Iraq come from the late uh, PPN uh, B site of Magzalia, located in, in the north. And uh, then it is attested in all region and period until the Middle Islamic uh, period. Up to now, the most excep exceptional uh, find was discovered in the uh, Neo-Assyrian uh, Northwest Palace of Nimrud, where a very, very large uh, volume of linseed was uh, retrieved. However, although the use of uh, flaxseed oil is attested in textual evidence, flax can also be ground for its uh, fibers. Here you have uh, a photo of um, uh, the remains of a clothes recovered at the site of Eridu in, in the south here, um, and possibly uh, made uh, from flax. We also have some evidence of uh, mustard seed in several sites, but the main change occurred during the third millennium. In the north, um, poppy was found at the site of uh, Kunara, and more, uh, sorry, here, and more surprisingly, uh, olive was found at Tel Taya and later at the site of Nimrud again. In the south, seeds uh, of sa safflower. Um, Um, uh, the, uh, the name is uh, Cartabum, uh, have been identified by Ran Nif in the Hellenistic occupation of um, Larsa. But one of the most interesting finds is the recovery of sesame uh, seed at uh, Abu Salabir and uh, more recently at uh, Larsa. Sesame was domesticated in the Indian uh, continent, as you can see here, likely during the third millennium and reach uh, southern Iraq at the same period, as indicated by the find at Abu Salabir. Indeed, it is, so it is uh, first attested in the um, early dynastic tree occupation of uh, Abu Salabir, so on the main mound, and it is later attested in the old Babylonian occupation of uh, Lars. Contemporaneous cuneiform text report its importation to palace and again the use of its oil as part of a ration uh, to individual workers. We don't know exactly how sesame reached lowland Iraq, but trading network involving, in, involving Mesopotamia and also the Indus Valley are very well known, especially during the third millennium. As you can see on the map, uh, archaeozoological analyses indicate the importation of animals such as uh, chicken and elephant. And similarly, there was a very big business related to the import of precious uh, stone like uh, chlorite or uh, chalcedony. So why not uh, importing uh, sesame? Environmental condition in the south were uh, suitable for its local cultivation. Exactly like uh, safflower that was also identified at Larsa, sesame yield uh, the highest quality of fixed oil. Textual evidence from Larsa even mentioned the use of sesame oil in the production of perfume. However, conversely to wheat and barley, sesame, exactly like for uh, millet, is a summer crop, meaning it is uh, sown in winter and harvesting in the autumn between October and November. This means that its introduction in the farming system of southern Iraq required logistical adaptation, a reorganization of the calendar to avoid overlap activities and, of course, uh, land. So what uh, can we say about the specificities and the evolution uh, of plant economies in ancient Iraq? First of all, based on archaeobotanical evidence, agriculture was mainly based on the cultivation of gloom wheat, so emmer and einkorn, and barley, mostly yud uh, to raw barley. They are both present from the uh, Neolithic onward, but barley uh, took over in the south around 2300 BC, but this was the result of a very uh, long uh, trend. 
Palaces are minor crop in Iraq, mainly present in the north and by far dominated by lentil. We see a slight increase of grass pea from the Middle Bronze Age, but there are so few data that one may wonder if it's really representative of a real change. Although fruit cultivation began in the late uh, 7th millennium, evidence remains scarce compared to the number of sites. In the north, fig and grape are the most common frequent, uh, the most common or frequent south for all period, but larger quantities are found during the first millennium. Remain of date are even more scarce, but large quantities have been reported on a Middle Bronze Age site. Several uh, oily plants occurred in Iraq, but the two most important ones are flax and sesame. If the former one is exploited since the Neolithic, the later one has been introduced in southern Mesopotamia during the third millennium and likely required adaptation. Some researchers claim for a rapid climate change, the so-called 4.2K BP event, occurring between the early and the middle Bronze Age in Upper Mesopotamia and characterized by a peak of drier condition. This event is controversial because from the end of the fifth millennium, there is a general long-term trend toward um, arid aridification. And this particularly uh, particular uh, peak has not been detected in all regions, including uh, Oman, so in the south, and uh, also in uh, northern Iraq. A recent uh, multi-proxy study carried out by Anke March and uh, Mark Altawil in the uh, Sharizor Plain, so around Suleimania in the so-called forest zone, suggests the persistence of relatively wetter condition uh, until the beginning of the second millennium. Whereas the climate change could explain the increase of barley, which is more uh, tolerant to drought in the south, there is clearly no change in the north as gloom wheat and also pulses uh, are uh, maintained are, as the um, main, main crop. However, from the uh, fourth to the third millennium, two phenomena uh, may have impacted farming strategies. So the development of irrigation and the complexification of the society associated to the uh, urbanization process. At Abu Salabi, for example, which is located in the in the south, in the south, uh, below the 250 millimeter of annual rainfall, uh, the uh, stable isotopic value for carbon do not indicate that crop were affected by water stress. In addition, the value um, are particularly high for wheat compared to barley, uh, suggesting the use of irrigation during the uh, early dynastic tree period. So development of water works, such as the construction of canal deviating water from the Euphrates River and the adoption of irrigated cultivation, certainly explain the predominance of bloom wheat at this site. More uh, paleoclimate uh, data are required, but if the north has also been impacted by aridification, we may suppose at first the effects were not uh, as dramatic as in the south because um, rainfall are uh, much higher. And second, the diffusion of uh, irrigation likely balance the effect. Finally, uh, the uh, reorganization of the society also affected the uh, plant economy of ancient Iraq. Population growth required uh, mass production, and it is likely why cereals were so important. The concentration of population in urban center and the hierarchization of the society induce the reorganization of the production, maybe with site uh, special, specialization. Some could have been specialized in the production of barley and other in the production of wheat. But in parallel, the economy remained quite diverse, as we've, as we've seen. The extension of trading network toward further distance and the emergence of elite requiring um, exotic goods allow for the importation of new resources such as sesame and the development of new agricultural system and or uh, production such as wine. However, there is uh, currently a crucial lack of uh, data from residential areas that would reflect a uh, household economy uh, depend dependent or not from uh, political decision. To conclude, this study highlights the importance of considering data on the long durée in order to nuance interpretation. 
Despite issues associated to all archaeobotanical data set, they yield incredible information that can and should be taken into account and compared with new uh, data. With this respect, it is important to nuance the importance of barley in the plant economy of ancient Iraq. And for uh, future work, well, again, we will have to deal with a wide uh, chronological framework and take into account regional scales and uh, local specificities. I take the opportunity of this presentation to remind the importance of collecting samples in uh, various archaeological contexts, not only uh, storage and not only when uh, remains are visible. And as I just said, in the near future, it will be necessary to put aside monumental areas, palace, temple, etc., to excavate residential areas, to approach the daily life of normal inhabitants that represented the major part of the uh, Mesopotamian population. This will be particu particularly important to compare Iraqi data to those from adjacent area, especially in northeast uh, Syria and southeast Anatolia. Finally, it is uh, absolutely fundamental to apply multi-proxy approaches to uh, reconstruct uh, paleo-environmental and uh, paleo-economy. Uh, Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'd like to thank all uh, people who helped me uh, in a way or another to um, carry this uh, project. Thank you very much.